Okay, so thank you. Uh, so indeed, I'll be presenting a general approach to multi-arm bandits on the risk criteria. So I'll give a quick recap of the ba stochastic bandit problem. So this is a classic example of the exploration exploitation dilemma in which we have a decision maker that needs to sequentially choose between k alternatives. Each alternative is associated with a sequence of ID rewards, which are themselves characterized by a distribution function f superscript i. So in the classic bandit setting, what we want to do is maximize the expected average reward, or similarly, it is maybe called the empirical mean. Even in this simple case, we don't know how to optimize this directly, and so what is first considered is an oracle problem, where the oracle is aware of the arm distributions, and now planning becomes simple, and it simply chooses the arm with the highest mean. Having an oracle, we can a regret is defined. In our case, we consider a normalized regret, since it will coincide better with our results. And the regret simply compares the performance of the oracle with that of our policy. So our policy should, on the one hand, exploit, meaning mimic the behavior of the oracle in some sense. And on the other hand, it needs to explore such that it learns the statistics of the arms. And to achieve this optimal trade-off, an example policy is the UCB policy, which achieves an order of log t over t uh, normalized regret. And this is uh, optimal asymptotically. So this is essentially what we need to know for the stochastic bandit for this talk. But the issue is that sometimes the average reward isn't exactly the objective that we want to maximize. For example, if we want to consider some sort of clinical trial, we may be more concerned with the rate of fatality and not just the average performance of the drug. Similarly, if we consider the stock market, we may be more concerned with volatility and not just the average yield of an asset. So an example that could satisfy this uh, is the Markowitz criterion which has been previously studied, here we consider not only the average reward, but also the empirical variance, and specifically an additive relation between the two. So as you can assume, in this case, we again cannot optimize directly, so we want to consider again the scheme of oracle and regret. However, now the oracle is no longer so simple. So even knowing the distributions of the arms, planning is now not so simple. So it is both computationally difficult, and beyond that, the actual policy itself is not stationary and depends on the horizon of the problem. So the oracle is not really known at this point, but nonetheless, we want to consider the notion of regret. So now we compare the performance of the oracle with those of our policy, where the oracle uh, performance is now not really known anymore. So in this case, as like a first attempt, you may be consider the heuristic a UCB type heuristic in which we first explore for our, around log t rounds, and then for the remaining rounds we exploit by choosing the arm that has the highest empirical mean variance that we've observed. And the question is, will this uh, work? Will this be good? So in the sense of exploring, uh, exploring an order of log t rounds may be sufficient. This is typically a Hofting type uh, result, but uh, again, we're not sure. And in the sense of exploitation, so I just mentioned that the oracle policy is, is not a simple policy that chooses a single arm. So it's, in a sense, may seem a bit strange that choosing a single arm for the remaining horizon would be optimal. But nonetheless, in a somewhat recent work, uh, Vakili and Sao show that essentially this scheme works for the mean variance. Okay, and they achieve an order of log t over t regret and show that this is asymptotically indeed optimal. And the key observation that they make for the mean variance that allows this is that while the oracle policy is not simple, it is a, a well approximated by a simple policy that chooses a single arm. So this essentially settles the, the mean variance case. But the issue with risk is that it is a rather subjective concept. So another user may want to consider uh, the sharp ratio, for example, as an objective, which uh, considers a ration relation between the empirical mean and variance. Another measure could be the value at risk, which considers the percentile of the reward. Or better yet, the conditional value at risk, which averages the rewards below a given percentile level. So all of these are viable risk measures, and we can consider other risk measures. And the question is, do we need a customized analysis for each one of these? And do we need to work hard? Or is there some sort of uh, lucky scheme, like in the mean variance case, that we can generally apply to these? So essentially what our work does is <coughs> uh, gives a, a general framework for verifying when criteria can be addressed in a similar fashion to that of the mean variance case. So uh, how do you achieve this generally? So the initial observation that we make is that the rewards that I just mentioned, the objectives, as well as various others, may be described as functions of the empirical distribution. 
Okay, so in the case of the classic bandit, this function is simply linear, and this really simplifies the analysis. And in the general case, we want to consider a nonlinear function, and we call this uh, general class empirical distribution performance measures, so EDPMs. So for example, for the value trisk and conditional value trisk, this function u, which works on the empirical distribution, would look like, uh, like these, which may seem a bit intimidating, but they're not too hard to, to get to. Um, so essentially what we now have is a reduced problem where, where we instead want to analyze the properties of u in conjunction with the distributions f superscript i, such that we can get regret analysis and algorithms. So just as a general outline for how we accomplish this. So first of all, uh, as a baseline, we want similarly to the mean variance case to ask when uh, or what properties of u do we need in order to get that the Oracle policy is approximated at least asymptotically by a single arm policy, a simple policy. And essentially we achieve this by simply requiring that u is continuous. There are some subtleties, but this is the essence of it. And this provides us a baseline for regret analysis. So how does it look again in a very high level? So we, with this baseline, we can take the regret and decompose it into a form of linearized regret plus an approximation error. So the linearized regret, as the name suggests, is essentially similar in its structure to the typical bandit regret. And as such, we can define a UCB type policy which achieves an order of log t over t for the linearized regret. We call this policy UUCB and it is a UCB type policy that is adapted to the properties of the function u together with some assumptions on the arm distributions. On the other hand, the approximation error is a new term which accounts for the nonlinearity of this function u. But the good thing about it is that it is nearly independent of the policy. So it has some dependence, but it is rather weak. And if uh, indeed we show that the approximation error is very small, then essentially our UUCB policy that minimizes the linearized regret would also provide us with a small actual regret. So what we essentially show is that for most cases, the approximation error is indeed of order log t over t. And in some more unfortunate cases, it is still only root t over t. So in these cases, we can only show regret of root t over t. And this all depends quite explicitly on the attributes of the function u together with the arm distributions uh, fi. So to summarize the results, essentially, we provide a general framework for both analyzing existing risk measures or creating new ones. For this framework, we provide a UCB type policy, which depends explicitly on the attributes of the function u and the arms. And for it, we provide a typically logarithmic regret analysis. We apply our framework to many known um, risk criteria. Specifically for the mean variance case, our results coincide with the existing ones. And for many other uh, risk criteria, we show that essentially assuming sub-Gaussian type assumptions on the arm distribution yields an order of log t over t regret with our framework. In some uh, less simple cases, like value at risk and conditional value at risk, there is some inherent non-smoothness in them. And as such, we need to require to have some subtler assumptions on the arm distributions for our framework to work. Um, how am I with time? Well, I was quite faster than I expected. Uh, <laughs> Okay, so, <laughs> yeah, I, I assumed I would not be able to delve into the technicalities, and this is, again, very high level, but essentially the, the main technical difficulty in this problem is bounding the, the approximation error. So the approximation error is, bounding it is essentially bounding this absolute expected value of the random variable z, which is essentially the difference between the performance measured by the function u on the empirical distribution, meaning our actual performance, to that measured on the expected value of the empirical distribution. So uh, the, the main things we assume by our framework is a sort of a local modulus of continuity, which is a fairly weak assumption, together with some uh, large deviation bound, which is essentially the sub-Gaussian type assumption. So if we only have these two assumptions in tow, a rather inevitable first step is to um, use the triangle inequality to put the, the absolute value into the expectation. Unfortunately, uh, when the random variable z is rather symmetric in the proximity of zero, its distribution that is, then this transition is rather loose. And if we do this, we only achieve the order root t over t for the approximation error. So a general way of resolving this is to find some sort of random variable x with zero mean, or at least close to zero, 
such that z minus x is no longer so symmetric, and then inserting the absolute value into the expectation isn't so costly. So again, we don't want to find this random variable x in a customized fashion. We want some general way of doing this. And what we show is that we can achieve this with a linear approximation of u. So when the function u is essentially uh, twice differentiable, we can achieve this in general, and so we achieve a uh, log t over t um, approximation error. When it is not, uh, we show some examples that are typically problematic for, uh, and uh, indeed achieve uh, only root t over t. So in the future, we, uh, we would like to see if the results are optimal, especially with respect to other pro problem parameters like the number of arms. Um, also, we may want to consider fully path-dependent risk criteria. So, for example, uh, like drawdown, since the empirical uh, distribution is invariant to permutations, essentially we can only consider risk measures that don't, that don't account for the order in which we re receive the rewards. And finally, maybe the dependent decisions like in Markov decision process. Thank you. So, maybe one quick question. Um, I didn't really get too much into it, but I think it will present some uh, difficulty. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> some difficulty which is uh, like completely will require a rather different scheme, uh, that is. Okay, let's thank the speaker again.